Hello, during this episode, we'll ride at Utah's Copper Cloud Ranch, discuss camp stoves and cooking, discover a 21st century bedroll, and talk with Andy Bales, cowboy crooner. I'm Celeste. And I'm Robert. Together, we travel the nation in pursuit of the best horse camps, spectacular horse trails, equine tools, deliver the tops in riding tips, and we'll meet the most interesting people along the way. Not only will we be traveling the nation, we'll be doing it with you, our viewers. Join us on our adventures with horses and mules. Copper Cloud Ranch is a place you need to stay, said Kelly Allen, my Facebook friend. So off we went to southern Utah's canyon country. Kelly was right. This place is pretty gosh darn spectacular. Not only are the facilities top notch, you've got red rocks, you've got slot canyons, you've got Indian petroglyphs. The place is pretty groovy. After we arrived and got settled in, we didn't waste any time in heading out on a ride. What's your name? I'm Jan. Jan from where? I'm from Cave Creek, Arizona. Good. What's your pony's name? The most important thing? This is Goldie. Riding out from Copper Cloud Ranch, there are miles and miles of trails to explore. That is pretty. Cougar Buttes? Cougar Buttes. Cougar Buttes. Just below me is a slot canyon called the Nautilus. It is way cool. This is something. It looks like uh, a whirling river went through and uh, just corkscrewed its way down. I've never seen anything this spectacular in my life. It is something. Look at this, and just the colors. All right, Amy just said it gets better. I thought it's pretty darn good so far. Hello down there. Oh, how cool. Hey, Diane. Hello. How's it going? Very good. Thank Are you, you having a good time? We're having an amazing time. This is the Copper Slot of Copper Slot Canyon. This is phenomenal. The rest of our ride was equally impressive, and we only covered a few of the many miles of trails in the area. The next morning, we enjoyed the sunrise, coffee, and reflecting on our ride with the other guests. Deanna and Jan let me go on a ride with them yesterday. It was fab. What did you think about the ride? They were it was spectacular colors here. Yeah. You know, the, such a variety and you know, seeing that white wave or what that was. Yeah, is that what you'd be? The white wave. Yeah. The white wave. Like the great white whale in Moby yeah. Dick. Yeah. You know, little Melville out there. Never seen anything like that. No. Anywhere. Right? What about the Nautilus? Oh, that's pretty cool. That was a white I have cool. never ever been someplace that cool. No. Yeah. That was, I mean, and just, it was so organic and, and the twists. Yeah, you could feel the water going through it. You, you yes. really could, right? You could yes. feel the water going through yeah. it. Just, it's pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so unusual. It yeah. is really. And the whole good. ride had so many diversities to it. Right. We went through some brush and some sage. And how many times did we cross the river? Oh, Four or five? Mm -hmm. And what amazed me is every time we turned around, like a different corner, it was a completely different oh, view. Oh, wasn't like, it? And that, I, I was like, every time it would be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Like, it was right. surprising how many times. Yeah, yeah. that was glorious. Right. And then the uh, the what the squawberries that tasted yeah. a little bit like a margarita. They really did. Mm -hmm. Margar <laughs> I think they should be called margarita berries. Yeah, so it'd be yeah. A lot rename more PC them. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And and more more yeah. true to true, true to name. True to form. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> After chatting with Jan and Deanna, we talked with Del and Amy, the owners of Copper Cloud Ranch. Copper Cloud Ranch. Why do you call it that? Two reasons. We have beautiful copper colored sunsets and sunrises. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, my favorite horse, his mom's name was Copper Cloud, and she's a Utah bred horse. Okay. So, n your, your, your favorite horse, your favorite place, kind of just fit then. 
Yeah. Okay. Amy and Dell, um, they are they're the power couple behind Copper Cloud Ranch. It sounds like you guys have the nittiest story in the world. <laughs> East Coast corporate success story meets West Coast cowboy builds a dude ranch. So it's yeah. not just I have my own horse or mule. Mm -hmm. It's if you want to ride yours, you gotta ask for Zorro. <laughs> no, Zorro was the best animal in the world yesterday. Hey, tell me about what we have today. How many how many people can stay here? It looks like you've got a lot of room, a lot of corrals, yeah. and they're nice corrals. Babies. Yeah. Yes. So we want them safe, we want them comfortable. Yeah. And I think we find that here they all have um, the shade over yeah. them, most there's of, yeah. water so close, most of them, yeah. nice, nice footing inside so they can roll. We want to make sure we provide a unique adventure and not just a trail ride. And from my perspective, yesterday you did that in spades. I had one of the best times that I've had this year. Uh, it's, it's not the Bob Marshall, it's not packing into the wilderness, but it's everything that that's not. We went someplace that is epically beautiful, that could, could be, should be on magazine covers worldwide, and I got to come back to a hot shower and a soft bed, <laughs> and, yeah. and a flush commode. Yeah. And you are providing something that I can't think why anyone would not want to experience this. So people can go to the website, coppercloudranch.com, or the Facebook. All right, so. Stay tuned for next time when Ruger and Robert ride Moon Canyon. That sounds good, Ruger and Robert, I like that. I realize there's a lot of great horse camps out there. I also realize that I need a little bit of help in scooping them up, which is a nice way of saying I need your help. If you know of a great horse camp, please drop me a line at info at trumeister.com as soon as you can. I'd be grateful. Do you look forward to a hearty meal at night and hot coffee in the morning when you're camping? If so, you'll want to bring a stove, but what kind of stove? That's the question. Camping with horses is great. Eating well while camping with horses is even better. But what stove to use? My favorite stove is this one. And ancient ancient two burner coleman i think it's older than i am i love this thing unfortunately this only goes with us when we're at the trailhead it's perfect uh, for that kind of stuff but it's too heavy and a little bit too bulky for what i like when we go into the backcountry so so that's not really an option for backcountry camping but you do there are choices though right for oh, backcountry yeah there's lots and lots of choices another white gas stove is the MSR Whisper Light, which we use quite a bit, I think, don't we? We do. Uh, this is a white gas stove, just like the Coleman, so it burns the same fuel, um, and it's pretty handy. It folds up very, very small, and it goes into the pannier bag real easy. Uh, some of the problems with this, it's not the best for simmering. It's great for boiling water, um, and let's face it, most of what we do in the bad country is boiling or reconstituting stuff, isn't it? It's true, dehydrated food mostly. For backcountry camping, a lot of times we rely on uh, freeze-dried food because it's lightweight, um, it's easy, and all we have to do is boil the water. Uh, so it works out pretty well, and let's face it, after a long day in the saddle, anything tastes good. What else do we have here for stoves? So we have a canister stove that takes liquid fuel in a canister. You can't refill these, and this is the stove part. It is super small. I call it my little pocket rocket stove, and it just threads on, you have a wee tiny cute little pot stand, and there's your stove. This container will last, well heavens, it's not empty, and this has already lasted us at least one weekend. Yes, and this is great for boiling water as well, very quickly. It's about all it's good for is boiling water. You're not going to really simmer, but it boils water really fast. Like I said, it's a little pocket rocket. Uh, one of the problems I have with it is... It's not very uh, eco-friendly. The canisters, once they're empty, they're they're done. Not el anything else you can do with them. For, for, for me, who likes to recycle, this is a problem. Well, 
We have a couple other choices here. What are these? Oh, well, if you really want to go green, you can go with the BioLite. This burns wood, so it's you don't have to worry about hauling fuel. Just hope that you can find dry fuel. And as a plus, it can also charge up your phone. Some of the problems with the uh, with the wood stove and the BioLite is that um, it takes a little bit of practice to actually get it going. If you have burn bands, you're not allowed to use it. Um, and let's face it, it's not going to charge up your camera phone that fast, but it's kind of nifty. So what are some other different kinds of stoves? Well, there's alcohol stoves, and this is one of my most favorite stoves at all. This is called a Trangia, and yes, it has a teapot because we're quite civilized. The Trangia is an alcohol stove, like I said, and it just burns denatured alcohol. You just pour it in here, light it, and cook. There are pots and pans, you can simmer with it, uh, so heavens, you can even bake if you're good. I'm not, but I do have aspirations. Um, so not only can you boil water, you can really do everything else. It's a full system. It is a full system, and like I said, it's my most favorite, not least because of the teapot. So how easy is it to find these different types of fuels that all of these stoves need? It's really easy to find fuel for these various stoves. For the alcohol stoves, you can go to your neighborhood hardware store and get uh, denatured alcohol. Or even the automotive store, if you get uh, the heat in the yellow bottle, I believe. It's just denatured alcohol. So it's cheap, it's readily available, um, works great. The wood stove, of course, takes sticks and twigs. Again, it helps if they're dry. Uh, the white gas stoves, so our MSR, our Coleman fuel, you can get uh, Coleman fuel pretty much any place. And for your canister stoves, you really need to find a camping or outdoor store to carry these. All of these stoves give you a lot of different choices, and certainly there may be others out there as well. Just look to see what type of camping you want to be doing. Do you have to worry about your weight and volume? Then maybe it's the pocket rocket. If you can be a little more luxurious with your weight, and, or at least volume anyway, try the Trangia where you can really cook up a full meal. It's nearly four o'clock. I think that means it's time for high tea. So why are you the trail meister? Because I help people find places where they can take their horses to ride into camp. So I connect people with their dreams. I have the largest horse trail and camp guide in the world, and it's free for people to find places for them to ride their horses and camp with their horses. You can go to trailmeister.com and then just search trails by zip code, by state, by city, by what you want to do, or by miles of trails, by if you're allowed to camp, by if there's water or even restrooms. You can sort and slice and dice that database any way you want to. So your job is you get to go find these awesome trails and test them out? Yes. Not a bad gig. It is the best job in the world. I am having a ball and it's such a joy to connect people with places to ride and to camp and then to teach people about trail riding and camping with their horses. The Old West that we uh, tend to romanticize wasn't quite as idyllic as the movies tend to make it out. For example, here is a traditional cowboy bedroll. Uh, make no mistake about it, these things have worked for well over hundreds of years since the Old West, but they're far from weather and rainproof. If it gets really nasty, you're going to get wet and you're going to get cold. Just as the Old West has given way to the New West, cowboy bedrolls have changed a lot since the 1860s. The 21st century alternative to wrapping a campus tarp around you is this, the Ranger Series from Five Owls. Everything that you need for camping is on the inside, so you can pack it in and roll it out. There's even a roof with a window for stargazing. Let's see what it's like to set one of these up. So the, so the, five, the five Owl bedroll.
Uh oh, I think I just heard thunder. Never fear. We have our roof. with Roger, the guy that invented this new staple of the New West. I want to talk with you because you have the stargazing system to avoid those wretched storms when they come in and I can't see the stars anymore. Can you kind of share a little bit about this? I mean, I'm looking at it and it looks pretty darn nifty, but can you explain it to, you know, certain folks watching what it is and, and how it works? Sure. So this is like a modern version of the old cowboy bedroll. Okay. So in this, instead of using canvas, these are all high-tech materials, so this is a high-end, waterproof, breathable fabric. So no canvas matty cloth that's going to soak through. None of that. Gore-Tex is beautiful. And here, the sleeping bag is actually built in. So okay. built into this, we have big draft tubes here because cold air wants to come through a zipper. Right. But this now blocks that cold air from coming in. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we do is that we build in a built-in a pocket right here for an oh, air. Oh, for our sleeping mat. So now this is 25 inches wide. It's 77 inches long. Okay. So it really gives you a lot of protection. You've got the roll. You've got you've replaced canvas. With, with a breathable waterproof material, you put a sleeping bag in here. Now you have this. You've turned you've turned roughing it into glamping. Everybody likes to be comfortable. All right. You know what? There's nobody. Else. Some guys are tough. Some women are tough. But if they can be comfortable, everybody likes that. Okay. So I'm thinking you took a lot of pages from their playbook and just yes, adapted sir. it to yep. you know the horsey side of the world. Exactly. So. This looks fabulous, looks great. I can already dream about watching the Pleiades, you know, in mid-August. But what if it rains? So now if it rains, the way we have this design is that A, you can have this piece of fabric down here and it protects your head if there's wet grass, anything like okay. that. So now there's nothing near your head. All right. If you put a few stakes in and we have a built-in hole, now if the rain comes in, you can just reach over and pull this canopy right over your head. And so I have a roof. I have a cowboy condo? You do. Okay. So this then protects, there's also a window here, so you can pull this canvas panel or this panel off. And basically, now you've got a window. Okay. And if you need to, you can also enclose the sides. Can we show it on, as sure. on this? The, sure. Do they all have it? Or they all do. So it's not an option, it's just part of it's it. It's just built in. So, so this is the window. And so these are some pretty scooping poles. Yep, these are the best poles you can buy. I never want my animal to carry more than it has to. What does all this weigh? So the, the Ranger 2, like this, it weighs about 8 pounds. 8 pounds. Which is very light. I'm not from Missouri, but I'm going to pretend I am. Show me. Show you. Okay. Yeah. So when it's all rolled up with the air mattress, with the pillow, it's okay. this size. Good heavens. Nelly. Yep. Ooh, Ellie would not really mind that. That's not much at all. And not only is this the cover and the window and my cowboy condo, it's the sleeping pad is in here. Yes. And a sleeping bag. Yes. So I have a complete shelter system. Complete shelter system. My favorite in the Ranger series is the regular Ranger because I can put my own sleeping bag in it and it lets me wash my sleeping bag, which is a good thing. It also lets me adjust my sleeping bags. If I'm going someplace where it's going to be really cold, I can bring a heavier bag. If I'm going someplace where it's not during the summer months, I can bring a lighter weight bag. For me, the ability to swap out that sleeping bag is a really good thing. Uh, as far as the rest of the system, it's great. The workmanship on this is phenomenal. I think it's going to outlast me. So those are my thoughts on the Ranger Series by 5 Al. For more information on 5 Al's Ranger Series, as well as the rest of their gear, visit 5owls.net. If you have an idea for an equine tool, trail riding gear, or just something nifty, 
drop me a line at info at trailmeister.com so we can share it with horse owners around the planet. Today we're in Washington, Ellensburg. Now, where are we in Ellensburg, Andy? What is this big cavalcade? This is the Washington State Backcountry Horseman Rendezvous. Rendezvous. It's rendezvous. You know, like the old mountain men all got together once a year and had the rendezvous. Well, this is the Backcountry Horseman. Rendezvous. So the Backcountry Horseman Rendezvous, which is why we're all wearing the big silly hats. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with the Andy Bales, I met Andy Tahoma Chapter Backcountry Horseman, what, almost they a decade ago. Uh, and and if you have any know anything about Backcountry Horsemen, we have the well, best food and potlucks in the world. It was at the Sand Flats Horse Camp. Uh, it was a steak feed, and you started singing by the campfire with the with the guitar. And it was phenomenal. Bring tears to your eyes, phenomenal. And uh, and I picked up your CD, your first CD there. Listening to you that night was so cool. And then to see you, you know, at events like this, and you, this isn't the only thing that you do though. And you, you play and sing, where else? Wind and fire only. Pretty much wherever they ask me. Okay. I always like to play for folks that enjoy this kind of music. I right. play the older traditional Western music. Uh, the Spirit of the West. Here Spirit of the West, okay. Hell's Canyon Mule Day. Right. I've been singing at the St. Paul Rodeo down in uh, St. Paul, Oregon. Okay. So been a Just, you know, different places around. Different places if you want to hear real, I guess authentic, cowboy stuff that they would have sang back in the day, I guess. How, so how long have you been singing? Playing the guitar started when I was nine. Nine? Yeah, we lived in a log cabin and... and uh, now it's getting this, even better. This was in Idaho and um, grew up both in Joseph, Oregon and Boy, San Bernardino. Joseph, Oregon, so just north of the Eagle Caps Wilderness area. Yeah, right out of the Eagle Cap there. But okay. we lived in a log cabin and we didn't have TV. Okay. And so and when the winters were cold, we read books and we played music. And that's how I really got started. Wow. So, so not only do you play the guitar and sing at Cowboy, you grew up a cowboy lifestyle, a log cabin in Joseph, Oregon by the Eagle Caps. Now you go into the Eagle Caps a fair bit, don't you, or have? I do whenever I can. Okay. You know, kind of love the Eagle Cap and pack in there. It's just right. heaven on earth. So What's your horse's name? Uh, Chief is a Missouri Fox Trotter I okay. ride. But Got a couple mules. Crisco, he's the white mule. Okay. And then Sierra, she's a uh, out of a uh, saddle. West uh, a spotted saddle. Rain. He is always. What is the next CD? You know, I've, I've got enough material easy, easily to do another CD. I just have to have time to do it. Okay. Yeah, I have a guy in Joseph, Oregon. He's actually got an old root cellar that okay. we recorded the CD in. It's very sound. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, grew up in a log cabin. Started playing the guitar at nine, and now you're going to be recording in a root cellar. Yeah, of course. So okay. The CDs I have now, right? They're both recorded in that root cellar. Yeah. I'm going to listen to them in an entirely different way. Yeah. How cool. That's what makes them extra cool. I believe it. <laughs> Storing ice in there. Yeah. Nifty. So, what's your favorite song that, that, that oh, you sing? Gosh. It's kind of a tough, tough one because there are so many good songs. Right. Um, what do you enjoy singing the most? I kind of like singing my, uh, you know, long eared coupe de ville. Okay. You know, because right. it's kind of what we do, you know. We right. ride and uh, we start out in the, in the spring down in the low country. Right. And follow the snow line up. And right. Right in the high country, you know, that short window of opportunity. Yes. From yes. the middle of July till uh, the snow chases you out in October. Right. In early November. And, then, then we just go back to the low country and ride that through the winter and okay. start again in the spring. So, yeah, it's kind of my Cooperville Long song is about riding my mule. Right. Yeah, all the different areas. Okay. Well, yeah. cool. Well, we better let you go because you're going to be singing for your dinner pretty soon. Yeah. And if you ever have the opportunity to see Andy and watch him perform, you got to take it because it is fabulous. And
Love trail riding and camping? Like and subscribe to our channel to see more of Coffee with Trailmeister and visit trailmeister.com for the largest and only accurate guide to horse trails and camps across America, riding tips, and even more. Want more? We'd love to tell you what's on the next episode, but we don't even know yet. Send us your ideas via comments and Facebook, and while you're on the computer, sign up for a free newsletter.